Hey guys, this is Crowbar Cracks Open Cubert Rebooted. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I thought it'd be cool to take a, take a look at another reimagined classic similar to Tech Mobile Throwback. Um, so today we're taking a look at Cubert. Um, what's cool about this game is it includes both the Cubert you love and know, uh, know and love, I don't know why I flipped them. As well as a new version that operates more on a hex system as opposed to the block based system. So, for good old sake, why don't we jump into Qbert Classic and get a reminder of what it was like back in the 80s. So, Qbert's a little round dude with a funky nose, and uh, your goal is to change the color of every block in the stage. Pretty easy concept, you know. Um, the controls are, you know, uh, a little bit tricky. God damn it. Um, basically, you have to hit both directions on the D-pad, or you can use the stick. Um, I'm having a little bit of a rough go here. Um, I'm probably going to throw my last life and then, you know, try to do this in earnest. Okay. So let's try that again. Um, you know, a little bit more prepared. As you can see, it gets a little tricky. Uh, the, the red blobs will fall right off. The purple blobs, once they get to the bottom, they become snakes. And they will start jumping right back up. Those uh, multicolored platforms will take you all the way back to the top. Um, so it can be very helpful. Okay, so now we're being pursued by a snake. Uh, that, was, that was just good teamwork by them. I had nowhere to go. Let's hope that I can at least get to level 2 uh, in Classic, because this is embarrassing. I used to be awesome at this game. Where where has my keyword skill gone? Alright, there we go. I want to say you get a 100, uh, 100 point bonus for... Oh my god, I thought that was drop... The perspective on this game can be a little tricky, but yeah. It came out in like 1983 originally, I think. So you can give him a little bit of a leeway, you know, on figuring out 3D space on a 2B rendered. Ah! As soon as I jump, I knew that was bad. Okay. We're going to give it one more go. Uh, this will be the last time, um, you know, this side of the game, all, this, all it is is this. Um, there's not a whole lot. You just start it up and you get the arcade version as you would had you just put some quarters in a machine. Um, you can't increase your credits or anything like that. You get your standard amount of lives, and that is it. What's also nice about the platforms is any snakes uh, or enemies will um, suicide off the edge, which is nice if you are kind of trapped by a snake. Now I gotta figure out how to get all the way down to that. Okay, there we go. It's starting to come back to me. <laughs> and this will be extremely helpful when we... Uh, extremely helpful when we switch over to the rebooted version. Um, and we're now... Uh, we're then going to be on a tax, hex grid. Jesus. Uh, that's the problem. is I try and... Um, I try and steal blocks too quick. And the computer can usually catch on fast enough. Uh, so close to level 3. Alright. Uh, there are also leaderboards, um, you know, I like that they keep it in the style of the arcade machine, that's, that's kind of cool, but yeah, Hubert Classic is start or leaderboard, not a whole, <laughs> did not mean to do that, so, uh, I'll die pretty quick here, um, and then we'll, we'll head on over to the rebooted version, What's, uh, I don't know if you, uh, that is picking up on the microphone, but every time I am dying, um, Qbert is coming through the speaker on, on the controller. It doesn't look like you can turn that off. Uh, it's just, do you want music? Do you want sound? Um, also, there's a tutorial, so if you don't know how to play Qbert, you can learn how to play Qbert. Uh, then again, Qbert is not all that, you know, difficult to learn. Um, so we'll start at the first level, just to give you sh an idea of how they can, uh, you know, changed it. So as you can see right off the bat, you know, we're dealing with hexes. I've, I can say that. Also, um, in order to jump, like, it's not just the directions. You actually have to hit X. 
Um, but you also get this handy little guide to show you like where you're about to jump. Uh, which you know, really limits how many errant deaths you get. But, you know, this first level is... You know, this game is geared towards people who don't know Qbert. I feel like the arcade version was just tossed in there as a bonus to those who may have grown up on the game. Um, it makes it really clear where enemies are going to drop. You, know, you saw that red X. Uh, it, it, it encourages you to collect those diamonds because that is how you unlock different characters. I actually, until I said that, forgot I had a uh, had different characters that I could use. So after after I do die here, we'll go check out the different costumes you can throw. <laughs> I, I swear to God, I'm not. Oh, jeez. Um, I did not intentionally die the first time um, because the five lives you get are per sets of three. So you know, my my star count is going to be based on how I did through all three levels, not just how I did. On the like this one. So those two deaths are gonna hurt. I'm probably only gonna get two stars. And then yeah, at the end, uh, they give you a bonus level to collect gems. Kind of re-emphasizing that this game is all about the gem collection. Which, you know, differs from Qbert, you know, normally. You know, score is important, but it's, it's you know, you really want to focus on getting all the, the blocks changed. So this is where they're introduced. Obviously, you know, having just seen original Cuber, you can see where they're deriving a lot of their um, inspiration from. I'm just not sure if this needed any changing. You know, Cuber was pretty good as it was. Uh, the only the only thing I can think of as far as why the changes were made was the way they've made the game it is a little easier now, you know, instead of having uh, only three or, you know, possible options to go if you're kind of stuck, now you have six. So it, it definitely increases the amount of places you can try and escape to. And here, uh, for the final score, or for, for the final star, I need to uh, hit a certain score mode, you know, score amount. So, try to do this quick while also picking up the power ups uh, and not dying. Is, uh, important. So now we got two snakes. So we should be just fine. And as you can see, I was only 20 points. 20 points away from uh, being able to hit that. Uh, I'm guessing if I had taken one of those multicolored platforms, I would have done it. Uh, let's jump over here uh, to the place I'm at. Um, as you can see, it kind of, as as you get deeper in, you know, they mix up the the formatting of, of the blocks in a way that uh, in a way that requires a little bit new strategies, but. Uh, it's actually the exact same with the first game, you know, uh, you don't only have that, that pyramid. Okay, so this is introducing the, the guys that undo your colorization. So, uh, the stick, uh, trying to play this game with a stick is, is very difficult. Um, that's the one thing I've really noticed is a lot of my deaths are, it, you know, accidental. You know, I'm trying to go one way, and I, I might just have it slightly off. And so, you know, I might plummet to my death instead of capturing a section I need. So, we just want to keep following the green guy um, as he changes things back. Right, so, we still got three lives to get through this section. game has a pretty uh, easy strategy in that you just want to kind of section things off. You want to divide the board up and try and come at it in, in 
that way. Um, you can also do like strings, like if you just start running in one. Ah! This is ridiculous how easy it is to misjump. But yeah, so like if, if you want to try and just string uh, one path together so that you hit everything, that's a, that's another way to do it. Right? You know, um, as you get later on, uh, those those green guys can screw you up because they will start at the top and work their way down. So any work you've done at the top will have to be redone. Glad we were able to get through that. Let's take a look at this uh, the new level that we've unlocked. You know, same exact uh, format. You know, you got the, th the three prongs. I'm guessing at a certain point they'll change this up too. So those green guys are, are absolutely worthless if, uh, <laughs> you know, they don't do anything if you haven't uncovered blocks out. Oh, okay! That is so BS. So I would... Ah! I would say that, yeah. This game is fun, but like the controls of Rebooted just aren't great. Um, it's hard to to feel like you're getting like the the best, most accurate uh, movement with the D-pad too. Whereas in the original, you know, I know where I'm going because of the square, uh, the block grids. Uh, nuts. So so we died there. It ramps up, you know, to the point where, you know, it does require that you know what you're doing. <laughs> so I could buy Bertha, Q Bertha, uh, Q Zerd. I'm not, I'm not close enough for Q Bot yet. You know, and then as you go down, these guys are more expensive, so Q Lantern is, is more. Um, but there are cool outfits that you can kind of dress your, your dude up in. You can give him a bow. I'm gonna go with Qzard, but that's another reason why you want to go back and collect all those diamonds. Overall, I mean, the game is fun. If you liked Qbert, it's a good way to get Qbert, because uh, Qbert Classic is, is what you expect. Uh, the rebooted version, I'm not a huge fan of. I just think the, the controls don't do it, do it any favors. Um, it basically makes using your D-pad a little bit tougher, and the the stick just doesn't doesn't have the accuracy that you're gonna need to make quick moves. You know, while the like what happened there? Like I actually had the shadow within the the hex, and it still sent me off the edge. You know, it's it's frustrating because there this should be a better version of Cupid than this, and it just isn't. That said, I think the I think the arcade version plays great. I think the arcade version is exactly what you want. It's tough. Um, you know, it's best played with the D-pad um, to to make sure that you're getting the moves that you want. But classic Cuber is classic for a reason. Now there was an instance where that was just me getting into a group and uh, taking my momentum too far. See, I don't always blame the game for uh, my mistakes, uh, but when your controls are kind of garbage, I'm gonna I'm gonna push back a little. <laughs> this game uh, actually was free, you know, like a lot of games I do on this series. Uh, it came to me free through PlayStation Plus um, a while back, um, so I figured I'd give it a, a look. Oh, I was so close. I was so close. <laughs> uh, well, I, I was going to show off uh, level 8 a bit, but since I couldn't get through that, uh, I think that's going to do it. Uh, if you like Classic Cubert and are looking for a way to play the arcade game on your modern machine, this isn't a bad option. Um, but if you are interested in a new take on Cubert, maybe maybe wait until they try it again because the well, the new stuff is is too similar to the old stuff and it just does not play as well so you know that's my take hope you hopefully you you at least enjoyed what you saw and if so yeah take a chance on it 
But for me, I, I think uh, the only benefit to this is uh, booting up the arcade game um, while, we, while we go off on that. So thank you again, guys, uh, for joining us here on Crowbar Cracks Open. Uh, this has been the classic game, uh, Hubert, rebooted for the PS4, but available on, I believe, Steam and Xbox One as well. So hopefully we'll see you next time, and you guys take care. Bye.